Welcome back to the Super Data Science series on Seaborn, where we are exploring the intricacies of this highly useful library while having some fun building attractive visualization. In the last episode, we left off where we set up our Seaborn library in our Jupyter Notebook. We imported our data, which we got from Kaggle, which was the Game of Thrones data set. We explored our data types. We pulled up the head of the data frame so we could get a visualization to expect our data to see really what we were working with. And we also built a quick visualization with the SNS bar plot, the bar plot for Seaborn. Let's jump right back into it and visualize our bar plot for a moment to take away some information before we move on to a new visualization. And we can see a few things. First, quite a few people died in 298 if we're looking at the data. We see the decrease from 298, 299 to 300. We have our major deaths and our year. But if you're looking at this, what can pose a problem here? One is that the values or the sizes are too small. So similar to matplotlib, we can use set, set style, set context, and set palette to change the appearance and customize our visualizations, our graphs further with Seaborn. You know, again, Seaborn built on top of matplotlib gives us some of these parallels. You can even define the RC parameters if we want to take a look here. It's like building a dictionary with stored parameters. You know, matplotlib has the RC parameters. We can also take a look at Seaborn as in the set style, and we see the parameters of the style and the RC of a dictionary was optional. And we can scroll over as well to overriding elements of the Seaborn styles. We'll get into that in a moment. But jumping back into example one of our Jupyter notebook, we have set our graph, but we haven't specified any font sizes or any specific parameters or arguments to define the size of the title for the x-axis or the y-axis, etc., etc. And we want to be able to see these a little clear. If you're giving a presentation, you would want something that is more clear so that the users don't have to strain and can see the data easily. As I mentioned, we can use the following. We want to put it before our graph, before our visualization, because we have to define it. If you do define a dictionary, it can use the saved or standard parameters until you change them. But for example, we discussed using set. We also talked about using set style. Now these are without arguments, just letting you see what you can use set context as well. And the following of set palette. we have that. We can use these to define the styling or change the customizations of our visualizations. Right now we're going to go with set context. And one other quick thing, a little piece of information, is you can actually use the following. I mean it doesn't have to be up here. Let's add it here just for example's sake. You can use the styles or the parameters of Seaborn and matplotlib interchangeably, at least when you're plotting if you're using plt.plot. So say we want to use plt style use, you can define it for using Seaborn. This would actually be switching to using the Seaborn style. And you can also say you want to do build your plot and under this you're going to plot and you want to pass in the default, you can pass in plt.style.use default. And this is going to switch it back to a matplotlib style. So if you ever are looking to interchange them or for specific reasons are looking to set the default for matplotlib or you need to specify the plot for Seaborn, you can use this style here for using Seaborn. But with that being said, let's get this changed so we can see our data better, so we can see our visualization a little more clearly. What we want to do is we're going to be using set context. So we have to use Seaborn, SNS, dot set underscore context, and we have to give it some parameters. We're going to give it the following. Let's set the font scale to 2. Let's use RC for the parameters. And we're going to use the dictionary of font size. We're going to set it to 6. And we're going to also use the axes label size to give the size to our labels of our axes of 20. Oh, we actually want that after that. We do not want it in as a string. We need to have that closed. 
and let's run it to see the changes. And you can see our major death and our year have jumped up or increased where they are clear, but our sizes here are small. We actually decreased them. So let's change them right now. Now you can always change both of them to experiment. I'm gonna leave the font scale alone right now. It's set to two. It will have an effect on it. You can, again, experiment with the values. It can help you become more comfortable. But let's try and increase it to 10 and have it run. We will let it go. All right, so it's getting better, but I would still like it a little larger to clarify the data so we can see the values. So let's try 15. We have 15, okay, and then that works. We can see it. It's not cutting off any of the data that we need. You can adjust these to fit in specific data to make certain things bigger, depending on the data that you're working with and really what you want to specify and visualize. This right now, we have our scale set to two, our font size set to 15, and our label size set to 20. And a really useful tool when you're building, if you want to see some default parameters or if you want to actually see the ones that are set with these styles, you can call the sns.axes underscore style without any arguments in it. And it's going to have the output with the following. You could use this to understand really what's going on with your plot, with your graph and visualization. You can make changes, again, adjusting using set context, using set style or set and set palette. These are the options that Seaborn gives you to adjust values to make your visualizations clear. And one more little piece of information, I think it will be really useful to understand Seaborn, especially when you start to build your own visualizations and you're out there experimenting with them and constructing based on your data. If you visit Seaborn, if you visit this page, you can see to what we just discussed. If you want to customize, as Seaborn states here, the Seaborn styles, you can pass a dictionary of parameters to the RC argument of axis style and set style. Note that you can only override the parameters that are part of the style definition through this method. However, the higher level set function takes a dictionary of any matplotlib parameters. And like we did, we called the axis style to see the following arguments and parameters. And with that, great job so far working through the changes, working through getting the bar plot figured out and fixing it to be able to see the data more clearly. Now let's move on and build a new visualization. And for our next, we're going to step up a little bit and do a little more complicated of a plot, and we're going to be building a factor plot or a nested bar plot to show the comparison between two of our values. After this, we're going to be getting into some more complicated. We will have to switch the data set just because we need some more numerical type data, a larger data set. This Game of Thrones data set is rather small in those terms, but for the purpose of these two first plots, we can use it just to get it going and start taking apart as we've done the Seaborn library. And we can see here, we, you know, we want to take a look. We'll hopefully get into some things along the lines of maybe a joint plot or a heat map or the facet grid. But for now, we're going to be working with the factor plot. Again, it's going to be a nested bar plot to show our two values. So let's get started building that. All right, first things first, we need to give it a name. And then following with our organization here, let's call it example two. And we'll set it to SNS. Dot. Again, here we're using the factor plot. And we're going to pass in the following arguments because we're going to take a look at the attacker size, the defender size, and we're going to be setting a hue for attacker outcome along with the type of bar and palette as mute. But here, let's get started with our x equal to attacker underscore size. Again, we're passing in these columns of data from our data frame. We're going to be setting y to defender size, underscore size. We're using the hue is a organizational principle. Like you can sort by hue within Seaborn. So we'll do hue equals attacker outcome. We're gonna pass in our data again equals DF. Should be familiar since we're using it. You can experiment again. You could pass in other types of data of your own data just to test it out, but we're sticking with this. We're going to set the size for it equal to six, the type or the kind equal to bar because it's going to be a grouped bar plot. And then finally, we're going to be setting the palette equal to muted. I want those double parentheses. And closing, we'll return that. All right. 
So let's run it and take a look. Well, we see we have our attacker size, our defender size, our outcome for our win and loss, but we are facing a problem. We can see in the X axis, in our axes that the parameters, our arguments, or the interval of the data is pretty clustered that we really can't visualize it that well. So what I want you to think about, and for a homework or a challenge that we'll resume in the next video, I want you to think about how you can solve this. So I'll give you two hints. You can take a look at setting the RC parameters and experimenting with the sizes. You can also take a look at something called X ticks or Y ticks and look into a possible rotation. That's all I'll say until we resume the next video. Again, take a look at those two hints. And as a quick overview, let me return this so we can see it a little easier. We are using, again, the factor plot with the type of the bar. It's a grouped bar plot. We're using our attacker size, our defender size, the hue to separate our variables, our data for attacker outcome with the win and loss. We are passing in our data. We set a specific size. And in return, take a moment to think about the parameters, the set context style options, and those two hints that I gave you before. And in the next video, we're going to resume this to take a look and see how we can solve it to fix the x-axis. And we're going to move on to, again, a more complicated plot within Seaborn to progress, and we'll keep building from there. Great job so far. I hope you guys are enjoying the tutorial and learning a lot about Seaborn. As always, subscribe to the Super Data Science channel. It's just a fantastic way to stay up to date in the industry, brings you weekly information, a lot of tips and tricks, overall useful information. If you have any questions or comments, please share them below, and I will see you in the next video.